MMA is generally regarded as one of the toughest sports in the world. Because of this, most fighters are forced to develop a never-give-up attitude, doing whatever it takes to win, even if it means sacrificing their own health. But for these athletes, they decided that continuing to fight wasn't in their best interest. Now, without further ado, and ranked in no particular order, let's take a look at MMA fighters who decided to quit during their bouts. Number 9. David Rickles vs. Michael Venom Page Michael Venom Page is known for delivering his fair share of flashy knockouts. It can come But it may surprise some of you to know that he actually made one of his opponents quit as well. That guy, David the Caveman Rickles, who faced off against MVP at Bellator 200. In truth, this fight was a complete mismatch in every sense of the word, as MVP was having his way with Rickles throughout the bout, landing at will, taunting him, and even dropping him during the opening round. Well, caused a leaky oh! Rickles gets tagged by the right hand! But when Page connected with a massive right hand in the second, opening up a nasty cut above his opponent's left eye, David Rickles decided to call it quits, waving the fight off just seconds later. He's giving up, referee, he's giving up, it's over! He would later confess that MVP broke and embarrassed him, resulting in the worst loss of his professional career. Was it worse than, than any other loss you had? Yeah, definitely. It was worse because I got broke. That was an, uh, truthfully an embarrassing fight for me. Number 8. Max Roshkoff versus Austin Hubbard Stepping up for a fight on short notice is never easy. But when Max Roshkoff took on Austin Hubbard on less than one week's notice, and for his UFC debut no less, it sadly produced an unfortunate outcome for the young fighter. The first round was close enough, but the second was another story, as Austin really began to take over, dominating the fight and earning a 10-8 on all the scorecards. Once Max went back to his corner, he repeatedly told his coach, Robert Drysdale to call an end to the contest. Oh, got, no, listen. Oh, no, we got this, Max. We're going to beat this guy. Oh, Keep it on her feet. You're going to clinch. Oh, and sure enough, despite his coach encouraging him to continue, the fight was ultimately called off. Do you want to continue yes. the fight? No, sir. Okay, that's it. Sadly, things went from bad to worse for Max Roshkoff, as he was cut from the UFC immediately after. Still, regardless of the result, the fact that he was willing to step in there at all, especially with so little time to prepare, is admirable enough on its own. I know that it's frowned upon, but guess what? Anybody that would talk about you quitting isn't in there fighting. He had the balls to come here and fight and take a short notice fight in the UFC. Number seven, Roger Huerta versus Ariel Sexton. Roger Huerta is a name that is probably familiar to more longtime fans of the sport. He had an excellent run in the UFC during the late 2000s, going six and two before parting ways with the promotion in 2010. Sadly, things haven't gone great for him during his post UFC run, losing 10 of his last 14 fights since his departure. Of course, one loss that stands out in particular came against Ariel Sexton in 2016, with the two competing under the one championship banner. The fight itself was actually highly competitive, and both guys had their moments. However, by the third round, it seemed like Roger was fading, and after his opponent landed a stiff right hand, he decided that he no longer wanted to continue, calling a stop to the match with roughly a minute left on the clock. As he's moving in and out, oh, he got hit again, but something's wrong. Oh, that is I think it, he's, he's called it. He's called it himself, I think, Roger. Seemed like he verbally said, I've had enough. Number six, Claudine Angelo versus Evelazio Silva. Claudine Angelo and Evelazio Silva may not be very familiar names in the MMA community. However, at JF Fight Evolution 13, their fight produced a moment that, for better or worse, cemented its place in the history books. During the opening round, Silva managed to drop his opponent before the two tied up against the cage. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Angelo signaled the referee for a timeout which, for those of you that know the rules of MMA, is not something you're allowed to do. Naturally, the referee wasn't able to accommodate this request, which caused Angelo to storm out of the cage. Unsurprisingly, this caused quite a bit of confusion from everyone in attendance. Apparently, Angelo had requested the bout to be stopped so that he could replace his mouthpiece, which had already come out twice during the fight, although some viewers claimed it was spat out intentionally in order to break up the action. Number 5. BJ Penn vs. George St. Pierre The main event for UFC 94 was a rematch between welterweight champion George St. Pierre and lightweight champion BJ Penn, with the two competing at 170 pounds. This matchup was one of the first true super fights in the UFC and was highly anticipated, not only because of the competitive nature of their first fight, but also because of their evolution. BJ Penn had become a completely dominant lightweight champion up to this point, while St. Pierre had started to carve out a successful run as welterweight champion. While Penn had some mild success in round one, the rest of the fight was all GSP, who used his superior grappling to control and punish the Hawaiian native. After the fourth round, Penn decided to call it off, letting his corner throw in the towel, with St. Pierre being declared the winner. Hey, 
the beating that he's taken from St. Pierre. To see BJ Penn quit in there wasn't exactly a great look, but to see him do that after saying that he wanted to go to the death with St. Pierre during the lead-up. To the death. We're going to go to the death. I'm not going to stop. I'm serious, George. I'm going to go to the death. Just made this outcome even worse. Number four, Diego Brandao versus Ahmed Aliyev. Fans of the UFC might remember Diego Brandao for winning the Ultimate Fighter 14 and for sharing the octagon with stars like Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, and Brian Ortega. But after his UFC run was over, he did a three-fight stint in Russia's Fight Night's global promotion, with one fight in particular ending in pretty bizarre fashion. During the second round of his showdown with Ahmed Alia, Brandao was hit with a headbutt on the chest, causing the referee to step in. But before he could separate the two, Aliyev threw a flurry of strikes at Brandao, causing Brandao to respond with an illegal upkick. Suddenly, the crowd began booing and throwing objects into the cage. This seemed to be the final straw for Brandao, who hopped over the fence out of frustration despite the referee pleading with him to stay. Sure, he was eventually led back in, but by that point, the fight was clearly over, with Aliyev being declared the winner via TKO due to retirement. Number 3. Jonathan Ivey vs. Travis Fulton Travis Fulton was an MMA veteran with over 300 fights to his name. However, when he faced off against Jonathan Ivey in 2018, he secured perhaps the strangest win of his lengthy career. Once the fight got underway, Ivey started off strong, dropping Fulton with a flurry of punches and following up with some heavy ground and pound. Looking like he was only moments away from being declared the winner, Ivy, in a truly strange moment, stopped fighting, stood up, and backed away from Fulton. Then, as Fulton got back to his feet, Ivy bent over and tapped on the canvas, voluntarily submitting to end the contest. While the whole situation was downright confusing at first, Ivy later went on to explain that Fulton was his hero, and he tapped out because of the respect he has for him, and that he didn't want to cause any more unnecessary damage. Tank Abbott and Travis Fulton, those are the two guys that I've always looked up to. The fight got to a point where beating Travis wasn't as important to me as saving my hero, per se, uh, from receiving unnecessary damage. Number 2. Chris Lieben versus Uriah Hall Anyone familiar with Chris Lieben knows that he is one of the most durable fighters in the business, and nearly impossible to put away. So when he faced off against Uriah Hall at UFC 168, many thought he'd be a good test for the young athletic fighter, who was fresh off a season of The Ultimate Fighter, but had come up short in his first two UFC bouts. Meanwhile, Chris Lieben was in the midst of a three-fight skid, and was also hungry to get back in the win column. In truth, this was a do-or-die situation for both guys, with Dana White even admitting that Uriah Hall would be cut from the promotion if he lost. The fight itself, however, was one-way traffic from Uriah Hall, as he picked Lieben apart, eventually dropping him with a right hand, nearly putting him away before the round came to a close. In between rounds, Lieben asked his trainer if he had gotten knocked out, and then stated that he was done. Oh, I'm done, man. Okay. Ending the fight in what would be his final UFC appearance. Number 1. Pat Smith versus Fabio Grigel It's pretty uncommon for a spectator to interfere with an actual fight, but back in 1997, when Pat Smith took on Fabio Grigel, we caught a rare glimpse of a fan who tried to take matters into his own hands. Once the fight began, Fabio got a hold of Smith and tried to get him to the ground, while Smith decided to grab onto the ropes to prevent the takedown. Pat Smith using the rope to stay up, and he pounding. On the head. Just as the referee was attempting to free his hand from the ropes, a fan actually came out of nowhere and tried to pry his grip loose. A man with a Fabio t-shirt came in, as you probably saw, ladies and gentlemen, trying to get Patrick Smith's arm off the ring. Safe to say, Smith was not too happy about this, and immediately began arguing with the official, quitting the fight on the spot. Sure, he probably shouldn't have been grabbing the ropes in the first place, but for a fan to get in there and do what he did, that's got to cause some level of frustration. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.